joining us today for Snow Isle Library's Summer Shorts. This week we're going to dig deeper into music. We're going to learn about rhythm and beats, play a musical game by clapping, snapping, and slapping our thighs. We're also going to learn about a recursive piece of music and how it relates to a movie strip. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you that we have Reading with Rover Thursdays at 4 p.m. and Family Trivia Fridays at 4 p.m. So just remember, families at 4. Now, let's get started with this week's Summer Shorts. <laughs> Hi, my name is Susan. I work at the Freeland Library. Today we're going to talk about rhythm and beat. Beat is the regular pulse under the music. Rhythm is what makes music music. Rhythm is the regular and irregular pattern of the notes. First, you're going to need an instrument. So I have a tambourine, sticks, Shaky eggs. Uh, if you don't have any of these instruments, it's okay. You can go in your kitchen, you can get a pot, uh, you can get some giant chopsticks, uh, you can get a container and put beans and rice in it, or you can use your hands. All right, I'll wait here while you go get your instrument. some rhythm cards. We're going to do each one four times. Let's see what the first one is. All right. Do you guys know what that is? Polar bear. All right. All right. We'll use our head to keep the beat. Another one. This one? Turtle. harder. Elephant sloth. Alligator, fox. Alligator, fox. Alligator, fox. Alligator, fox. Alligator, fox. All right, what's next? Zebra, bald eagle. 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 All right, I think I have one more, and it's extra fun. You ready? Chicken, armadillo. Kangaroo, cow. Spectacular!
Taylor. You guys did great. Give yourselves a big hand. Okay. For copies of these rhythm cards and other printable resources, visit snow-isle.org forward slash summer dash reading. Thank you for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. Goodbye for now and keep playing music. Natasha, and I'd like to share a music game with you. It uses body percussion, and it has these motions. Bim, bum, and bitty in your lap. An important element of music is patterns. So for this song, it has the pattern bim, bum, bim, Bum, bitty, bitty, bum, bitty, bum, bitty, bitty, bum, bim, bum. A symbol that we use in music to repeat is this. So uh, this sign means repeat what you just did. Are you ready? Bim, bum, bim. Bum. Bitty, bitty, bum. Bitty, bum. Bitty, bitty, bum. Bim, bum. The next element of music is melody. And that makes our pattern a little easier, I think. This is the part that you would sing. So for this melody, the, it has two endings. For the first ending, it goes up. Bim, bum. And on the second time through, it goes down. Bim, bum. So here's how the song goes. Bim, bum, bim, bum. Bitty, bitty, bum. Bitty, bum, bitty. Bum, bim, bum. Repeat. Where's my sign? Here it is. Bim, bum, bim, bum. Bitty, bitty, bum. Bitty, bum. Bitty, bitty, bum. Bim, bum. So that was the A section. Another part of our musical patterns is that we have sections. So that was the A section. Next is the B section. You might have more sections after that, but for this song, there's only the two. So for section B, here's how it goes. of music that I would like to share with you today is tempo and that's how fast or slow that you are going. If you're going really slow then it's largo, speed it up a little bit, andante, faster still, allegro, next vivace with lots of life. If you're going just about as fast as you possibly can that's presto. And if you go even faster, it's prestissimo. Those are all Italian musical terms. And that's what makes bim bom into a music game. Because each time you repeat, you go a little faster and you see how fast you can go. Are you ready?
Here we go. Bim, bum, bim, bum, bitty, bitty, bum, bitty, bum, bitty, bitty, bum, bim, bum. Bim, bum, bim, bum, bitty, bitty, bum, bitty, bum, bitty, bitty, bum, bim, bum. and I work at the Kameno Island Library and today I'm going to show you how to make your own drums using empty food containers that you probably already have lying around in your recycling bin at home. But before we get into that I wanted to talk with you briefly about the history of drums since we're learning about music this week. Drums have been around for many many years uh, and they've been used by many many different cultures to make music. In fact, the oldest drum that archaeologists have uncovered so far, they think dates back to about 6,000 BC, which is over 8,000 years ago. So for many, many years, people have been making drums and making music on drums uh, and enjoying the sound that it, that it produces. And today we're going to join them by making our own drums. So the first thing that you're going to want to do uh, is grab an empty food container. This is going to serve as the shell of our drum. For the top, we're going to be using balloons. If you don't have balloons at home, you can also use packing tape, but I think balloons work best. Um, so that's what we're going to use today. And then rubber bands, as well as a pair of scissors, and either a set of drumsticks or a set of unsharpened pencils. So the first step is to decorate your shell. Now, I'm not going to take the time to decorate my shell with you today because I think it would be boring to watch me do that, but my daughter Grace made one earlier today, and it looks like she used some construction paper, some stickers here, um, it looks like she glued some shiny pretty things on there and added some lace at the top. You can use whatever you have on hand to make it uniquely yours. So once you've decorated your shell, we're going to put the top or the head of the drum on. So we're going to take our balloon and we're going to snip off the long skinny part at the bottom. And the reason we do that is so that we can get it nice and tight over the top. The tighter, the tauncher, the top is, whoops, the tighter the top is, uh, the better tone your drum will have. So just snap it kind of snugly over the top there. If you're using a bigger container, like a coffee tin, um, sometimes it's helpful to have someone hold your balloon down for you while you slip the rubber band over, because the further you stretch a balloon, um, the more likely it is to kind of snap off and go flying. But if you just have a typical size can like this, you should be able to do it yourself with no problem. 
Also, when you're stretching your balloons over, you want to be really careful that you don't get cut on the rim on the inside because sometimes there can be sharp edges left behind. So once you have your balloon on, you're going to snap a rubber band over the top like this. Now my rubber band was pretty small, so I just needed to wrap it around once. If you have a bigger rubber band, um, you might need to wrap it around two or three times, and that's fine. It won't affect how your drum sounds at all. So once you've done that, we're going to take our sticks. Now, if you have drumsticks at home, that's great. They'll work. They'll work great for this. Um, if you don't have drumsticks at home, like me, a set of unsharpened pencils work just as well. So the part that you're going to hit your drum with is the soft part at the top with the eraser on it. Let's give it a shot. It sounds pretty good. Another fun thing you can do if you have an assortment of sizes uh, of food containers is you can make a set of drums. Now the bigger the area on the top, the bigger the area of the head, the lower pitch it will make. I'll show you. And the smaller the area of the head, the higher the pitch. Now the reason this is true is that when you hit your drum, it creates sound waves or vibrations, and they sort of travel around the area of the head at the top. And the more area they have to travel around on, the slower they move. And the slower they move, the lower the pitch they create. And the same is true, but opposite, for um, the smaller containers. The less area that those sound waves have to bounce around on, the faster they move. And the faster they move, the higher the pitch. So if you have an assortment of cans like I do, can definitely hear the different pitches and it's kind of fun to play around with. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Please visit sno-isle.org backslash summer hyphen reading for additional online and printable resources. from the Stanwood Library. And I'm Ricky from the Edmonds Library. Today we're going to play a piece for you called the Crab Cannon. And a cannon really is just a sophisticated round. And a good example of one is something I'm sure we have all sung at some point, which would be row, row, row your boat. Bach wrote this piece in 1747. He had gone to visit his son, who was employed as a musician at the court of King Frederick the Great of Prussia. Frederick the Great was also a musician, and he composed a theme to have Bach improvise on during his visit. Bach thought the theme was rather difficult, and after he went home, he thought about it some more and composed an entire suite of pieces I believe there are 13 pieces in the musical offering, or in German it's called Das Musikalische Opfer. The crab cannon was written to imitate how a crab walks, which is side to side, and normally that's exactly we, how we would play it. We would have one music stand, Vicky would be on one end, I would be on the other, and as we read the music, we would cross paths. However, so that we can properly socially distance today, we're going to take a more circular approach. And if we wanted, we could even play forever. This is the Crab Canon from J.S. Bach's musical offering. I start at this end, Ricky starts at this end. And we play in opposite directions until we reach the end. And then we reverse and play the opposite direction until we reach our starting point. 
Now I'm going to play the royal theme for you, which is the main theme for the Crab Cannon. What's unique about this, though, is that I'm playing it today on the clarinet. And this instrument, especially as we see it, would not have existed for quite a while after Bach's death. And I'll be playing the flute. King Frederick the Great was also a flutist, but his flute would have been very different. It would have been made out of wood, and it only had two keys. This flute is made out of silver and has many, many keys. It's a much more complex instrument. So without further ado, the royal theme. So if you want to, you can make a musical bracelet afterwards. You can download this sheet that has the music written on it. And when you cut it out, you're going to fold it in half. So it makes half of the pieces on the front half and the back half has the other half of the piece. And you just connect the edges and make a half a twist and tape it together. And then you have your Mobius strip bracelet. So when we played the music, I started right here and played in this direction. And Ricky started right here and played this direction. And a Mobius strip is a very strange thing. You start out with just a plain strip of paper. Now, if I were to make this a Mobius strip, I'll take one side of this and turn it half way and then tape it together. So once you make your Mobius strip, if you hold it like this, it should remind you of something. It looks a lot like the symbol for recycling. And now I'm going to draw a line all the way around the outside of the strip and let's see what happens. So now you can see that the line goes all the way around 
on both sides and I never stopped making the line. It's a continuous line that is somehow on both sides of the paper. Thanks for joining us, everyone. You can go to snowisle.org forward slash summer reading for additional online and printable resources. Welcome back. I hope you had fun. Don't miss more summer shorts Tuesdays at 2 p.m. In the meantime, you can read, learn, and discover by visiting snowisle.org slash summer reading for full programs and a summer reading log. Read 10 hours this summer and you'll get a free book. Read 10 more hours and you'll be entered to win a grand prize drawing. Keep digging deeper and we'll see you next week.